Uh, good morning to one and all. Uh, today I will be presenting the lecture topic name uh, Math Preparation in Fixed Prasana. Okay, coming to the learning outcomes first. Uh, there will be three learning outcomes. So we will discuss the sequence of treatment procedure before uh, fixed prosthodontic treatment. Okay, so th we have to follow a sequence. Um, then we'll be discussing the various disciplinary treatments involved in mouth preparation. So there, that is the, all the other departments. And then we'll be discussing, um, so basically that's what we will be discussing. Um, the discussion of the criteria for selection of abutment teeth is a repetition in the learning outcome from the previous lecture. I have already discussed it. In this lecture, I'm not discussing this. Yeah. It's already taken up in the last lecture. Okay. Coming to the introduction. So there is a sequence of treatment procedures, right? So the sequence of treatment procedure before starting an FPD treatment is, um, as a general plan, we follow these rules. So first we relieve, re we relieve the symptom, that is the chief complaint, and then we remove the etiological factor, example, the excavation of caries and removal of deposits, okay? And then we repair the damage and then we maintain the dental health, right? So when we repair the damage afterwards, when we maintain the dental health, probably then we'll be replacing or doing a fixed prosthodontics, right? Okay. So coming to the different modalities or disciplinary um disciplines that are um, carried out before uh, doing a fixed prosthodontics. So first one is the oral surgery. So here in short, I'll be discussing what the procedure is done. So um, here you will be doing a soft tissue procedure or a hard tissue procedure. In soft tissue procedure, you'll be um, taking out or uh, first of all, you'll be taking out any of the soft tissue abnormalities. Um, you will be uh, taking a radiograph and seeing if any surgical intervention is required or not, okay? If required, elective soft tissue surgery may be done to alter any muscle attachments if required, removal of any wedge of soft tissue, um, any modification of the edangulus ridges to fort accommodation of fixed or removal partial prosthesis, okay? Uh, coming to the heart tissue procedures, uh, simple tooth removal is the most common surgical procedure involving heart tissue. So it can be for performed um, uh, for maximum healing time, meaning uh, once it's performed, we have to wait for the maximum healing time. And uh, if required in the procedure, even the osseous recontouring, the bone recontouring also might be done. Okay. So Examples here will be tuberosity reduction, tori reduction, tori removals, and impacted teeth removal. Okay, so here you can see this is soft tissue surgery. So um, we are correcting the ridge surface. You can see bulbous uh, areas of gingiva. So here they're doing a surgery and correcting the space so we can put an FPD. Okay, this soft tissue surgery. Coming to the heart tissue surgery, here you can see tuberosity reduction being done, guys, okay? So it was done. So we could accommodate the processes as we did not have too much space for the processes, okay? Coming to mandibular tori's, right? So it can be excised, guys. Here you can also see buccal torus, okay? So you do see patients with buccal torus. If it is not interfering in their daily routine or processes, we can leave it like that. But if we want, we can remove the tori. Sometimes the tori will give us some retention, guys. If we do a removal prosthesis, okay? In cases of FPD, if required, we will have to surgically remove them. You can see a bimandibular bi tori right here. Okay. Coming to more disciplines in oral surgery, that is the orthognathic surgery. These patients require careful evaluation and attention so that there is no occlusal dysfunction when facial skeletal improves, okay? So here you will correct the skeleton portion of the jaw, right? 
only if required this has to be done implant supported fixed prosthesis also can be done it's a very successful treatment modality it has to have very specific patient selection and it has to have a skillful clinician okay coming to the second modality we're dealing with caries and existing restoration um so basically the conservative dentistry so any restoration on the teeth which are indicated for crown and bridge has to be examined and restored properly although most teeth in need of restoration require foundation restoration this is a very important word guys okay small defects resulting from less extensive lesions can often be incorporated in the design can be blocked out with cement. okay right uh Coming to foundation restoration, I'll be showing you photos in the coming slides. Uh, a foundation restoration or a core is a built, is used to build a damaged tooth to ideal anatomic form before it is prepared for a crown. Okay, so you have to prepare it, um, make it fine, uh, and restore the anatomy, make the service uh, feasible, everything should be okay, and then we can take it up as a abutment teeth okay with extensive treatment plan the foundation may serve as an serve for an extended time it should provide the patient with adequate function and should be contoured and finished okay to facilitate oral hygiene okay so how do we do selection uh or how do, how does the selection criteria work selection of foundation material depends on the extent of the tooth destruction okay or overall treatment plan and operator's preference okay so dental amalgam especially can be used there are many many restorations it can be used. so despite of its limitation amalgam is still the material of choice for most foundation restorations on posterior teeth yes nowadays we're not doing it guys it has good resistance to micro leakage and therefore recommended when the crown preparation will not extend more than one mm beyond the foundation tooth junction okay uh, these are the list of foundation restoration material i'll be going just i'll be talking a few points about each amalgam glass isomer, composite resin and cast gold okay right um yeah so mostly the composite and uh, GIC will be used. Mostly composites. Okay. So how do we place uh, the placement of the foundation restoration? Depends on the extent of the damage of the teeth. Okay, guys. So you can see in A, we have just put a cement. Okay. For a very minimal damage. For B, you have kind of place an amalgam, like a bigger restoration. For B and C, I have placed an amalgam and a pin retained amalgam. Okay. For D, I've kind of placed like a cast gold, right? I've put like a cast and I have um, placed it on the retainer, okay? For E, I've also done a post and core, guys, okay? Post and core, guys, okay? So you can see there are the various modalities, okay? Coming to the resin modified GIC, which is very suitable for small lesions. The material sets rapidly. Um, enabling crown preparation to be performed with limited delay okay so when placed correctly it exhibits addition to addition to dentine um, and although the conventional undercut retention is needed to supplement this right so again it can be a material of choice the chief dis disadvantage here is has low strength right and it's a very inferior to composite um and it will not really serve as a long-term restoration okay so that's why introducing composite resin composite resin exhibits many of the advantages of gic glass isomer it does not require condensation and sets rapidly formulations are available that release fluoride which may provide an anti-carogenic um benefit okay bonding is achieved with dental bonding agent or by etching a glass isomer liner okay all right a conventional tooth colored composite resin is not recommended right as a foundation uh, material it is very difficult to dis you know distinguish between the junctions guys okay 
Uh, pin retained cast metal core, I will be showing you a photo in the next slide, um, could be considered for extensively damaged too. So the cemented foundation is retained with tapered pins. The pr preparation, uh, sorry, requires careful, uh, the preparation requires, yeah, careful location and placement of the pinholes, but otherwise is straightforward. Okay, so the foundation is fabricated in the lab as an indirect procedure. Okay, uh, coming to varnishes and bases. So sometimes these are important because it prevents thermal irritation in the if the preparation extends close to the pulp. A material with good physical properties such as glass isomer or zinc phosphate could be chosen, right? Calcium hydroxide liner should be reserved for deep cavities, guys, okay? Coming to pin retain. Sorry, guys. I think this is a little cut off. So pin retain restoration. So we'll be following. So this is badly damaged mol molar. The pulp is healthy. Um, caries are excavated and uh, tooth is prepared for the cast core. Okay. D. Uh, okay. So now we place the four pin retain restorations. Okay. You can see that they have been placed. Okay. Now casting and sprueing and everything is done, guys, in the lab. And um, yeah, sorry. And then we have a completed foundation cemented. Okay, can you see? Right. Okay. So coming to endodontics now. We for, we already covered oral surgery and conservative. Now we're coming to endodontics. Right. So now we will assess the case. So what, how do we assess? The clinical examination should be done for vital teeth and you can use the electric pulp tester. A tenderness to percussion can be used. Any abnormal swelling, fistulas, discoloration um, should be seen. Okay. So treatment as a general rule, conventional or orthograde rather than surgical endodontic should be preferred if possible. Right. Um, yeah, so when a post and core restoration is needed in an endodontically treated to 3 to 5 mm of apical sheet should, should be retained, guys, okay? So performing elective endodontics may be desirable in the following situations when there is problem in obtaining a, com a compatible line to draw between the multiple abutments when it is impossible to gain adequate retention in a badly worn or damaged teeth. Okay? Right. So you can see a very common endodontic case. Uh, I, we can see a periapical lesion. Um, sorry. We can, I can see a periapical lesion here. I can see the widening. I can see attachment loss. I can see very deep caries. I can see furcation in Mormon. Very large, right? So a gran granulomatous cyst or granulomas are being seen. Probably we will have to go for extraction of this teeth, guys, okay? Uh, this can still be saved, yeah? This will probably also go for attachment. Look at the attachment loss, guys, okay? So we have to deal with these. We have to make these okay. Either remove, either restore, either do RCT or post and then we can take it up as an abutment for an FPD. Okay, now coming to three modalities and the fourth modality is, is periodontics. Okay, so definitive periodontal treatment can be done unless a patient's existing periodontal disease has been properly diagnosed and treated. Fixed prosthodontics is doomed to failure. Okay, in addition, certain specific periodontal procedures may be indicated. So I'm going to just talk about four procedures. Um, in a few lines, mucosal reparative surge therapy. So the width of the band of attached keratinized gingiva may be increased by surgical grafting, okay? Uh, as a part of mouth preparation before the restorative treatment, it is recommended that the tooth to be treated with the restoration extending into the gingival sulcus have approximately 5 mm of keratinized gingiva, okay? At least 3 mm of which is attached gingiva okay right coming to sorry a uh, free autogenous gingival graft so um planned abutment tooth lagging adequate keratinized gingiva guys okay right so 
there is no not much of hair tuna is ginger but the recipient site is prepared okay recipient site is prepared guys this one okay and um, the graft is sutured in place here okay guys right um, some apical adjustment is needed around the premolar region okay before application of a surgical dressing right and then you can see a healed graft guys okay right you can see a better attachment here all right this is the free autogenous gingival okay laterally positioned graft um where we see recession guys in in short so i see a recession here um localized recession around the central incisor uh, a width adequate width of keratinized tissue from the donor side is taken and uh, like from here and then cut and placed right and then sutured and then you can see the healing right Coming to coronally positioned pedicle graft. A coronally positioned pedicle graft is used when a single tooth exhibits gingival recession and sensitivity. Okay? All right. And then we'll just, I'll just show you the photo. Subepithelial connective tissue graft. Connective tissue that does not carry epithelium has also been used for gingival grafting procedures. Okay? This is a coronally positioned pedicle graft. So the position of the free gingival margin after autogenous graft placement, right? Approximately four mm of recession still there, guys, okay? So incision is given, right, for the pedicles, okay? Divergence is maintained, okay? And then you can see that the pedicle is positioned and sutured in place, right, at the CEJ, right guys here can you see it's sutured at the same and then the healing of the graft takes place okay right having to the crown lengthening procedure which also comes under perio guys yeah okay so surgical crown lengthening basically or extension may be indicated to improve the appearance of the anterior tooth or when clinical crown is too short um to provide adequate retention without the restorations impinging on the normal soft tissue attachment or biologic width, okay? This attachment varies. Uh, this attachment averages approximately 2 mm in width and any restoration that impinges on it may cause bone loss because of the effort of the host to maintain the 2 mm distance, okay? In some patients, uh, an apparent unsalvageable tooth with extensive subgingival caries, subgingival fracture, root perforations uh, resulting from endodontics can successfully restored after crown lengthening. Okay, so crown lengthening basically increases the crown root ratio. Okay, guys, this is important. Okay, so the decision has to be made before. Okay, yes, it does combine surgical and combined orthodontic periodontal techniques on the patient okay so basically what is surgical crown lengthening it is sometimes possible to achieve an effective increase in crown, crown length by gingivectomy or removal of gingiva by electrosurgery alone although osseous recontouring is most often needed guys so sometimes even osseous recontouring has to be done okay restoration of the tooth that has undergone crown lengthening is commonly undergone in four to six weeks after the surgical procedure but yes it has to be closed by a temporary crown okay that tooth has to be prepped and closed by the temporary crown a final impression has to be taken later and then the final restoration can only be fabricated later okay All right okay so you can see crown lending procedure right so a fractured and carious second premolar can can be seen a uh, flap is reflected. A removal for any granulation tissue, guys. Okay. Bone removed on the mesial aspect. Okay. So bone is removed, guys. You can see. Okay. In D, we see that distally the bone is removed. So that uh, we do have alveolar crest. So basically both the sides, guys. Okay. And then healing after the surgical crown lending, okay, 
final crown restoration cemented in place okay so i got when we get sufficient height we can just restore the crown okay yeah so from there we came here guys okay yeah so maintain also uh the periodontics consists of maintenance and reconstruction of interdental papilla if required guys okay so absence um, or presence of interdental papilla, especially in the man maxillary anterior area, is a concern to the restorative dentist, the periodontist, and the patient. Okay, multiple techniques have been used with and without the use of guided tissue or bone regeneration to maintain and reconstruct the interdental papilla. Okay, um, orthodontic. Periodontic examination also consists of extrusion, guys. I'll be showing you the photo there later. Can be considered whenever a fracture carries lesion extends a pickle to the free margin or the gingiva, guys. Okay. So, however, it is especially important when aesthetic is a prime concern. Okay. All right. Okay. So here you can see that the reconstruction of the interdental papilla takes place. Okay. Um, yeah, and here, sorry, the interdental papillas, guys, okay, and here they have been positioned back in place, okay, after the papillary glass and final tissue recontouring. So, do you see the difference, guys? Yes, okay. So, orthodontic, now we come to orthodontics, guys, okay. So, minor orthodontic movements sometimes are needed, uprighting of malpositioned abutment teeth can improve the axial alignment create more favorable pontic spaces and improve embrasure form in the fixed prosthesis okay assessment we need to have an orthodontic treatment you can take diagnostic cast articulate them do a dental surveying and uh, yes we can assess we can duplicate the cost and we can assess uh, minor tooth movements uh, which is closure of diastema, priding of molars, alignment of tilt and teeth, okay? And especially valued when explaining the patient proposed, uh, like a proposal uh, for the preparation, guys, okay? All right. Uh, so diagnostic preparations and uh, waxing procedures made on these altered casts uh, often clearly... Um, illustrate any benefits for minor tooth movements okay so treatment in general practice uh, it is often possible to perform minor tooth movements without any fixed prosthodontic treatment right and then if there is more required then the proper order treatment will come into play okay so coming to showing you a case of orthodontic extrusion before restoring a badly damaged teeth okay so the maxillary first premolar guys okay has been perforated mesially sorry this one sorry uh has been perforated mesially and uh surgical crown lengthening was indicated because the level of perforation is a pickle to the osseous crest right so a flap was raised guys okay minor orthodontic bracket uh sorry sorry uh, orthodontic bracket were cemented with uh, rebounding wire initially guys okay it was done okay so the extrusion is completed um then osseous recontouring has to be done guys at this stage and there there you go guys you can see how it was done okay so after that, uh, uh, the, what do you call, compulsory endodontic post and core, everything was done and a crown was made, right? Okay. So first we're looking at the occlusal adjustment. It is done when selective reshaping of the natural dentition is being considered. It is important to remember that this, this is a purely subtractive procedure. So tissue is removed and just a limited enamel. Okay, obviously before any reversible, reversible changes made to the dentition, a careful diagnosis. So basically the mesial inclines of the maxillary uppers, okay, and the distal inclines of the mandibulars, okay.
Okay, guys. So coming to diagnostic adjustments, two sets of articulated, uh, articulated diagnostic cuffs are required for diagnostic inclusion adjustment. One set serves as a reference. The other is used to evaluate how much tooth structure has been removed and how much more must be removed to meet the objective of the procedure. Okay, so this removes the efficiency of the treatment plan before anything is done clinically. Okay. The occlusal surface of each cast is painted and soaked and then examined, guys. Okay, so that is one way of doing it, right? So the primary objective of selective occlusal reshaping are as follows. This is very important, guys. So to redistribute forces parallel to the long axis of the teeth by eliminating contacts on inclined planes and creating cusp force occlusion. To eliminate deflective occlusal contact centric relation which coincides with the maximum intercuspation, okay? To improve worn occlusal anatomy, reshape cuspal tables, narrow occlusal tables, okay? To correct marginal ridge discrepancy, okay? And to correct tooth malalignment, guys, okay? So these are the primary objectives. Um, coming to the last few slides, so just giving an overview of how we do clinical occlusal adjustments of so patient selection is done. We do determine the patient for this uh, irreversible, irreversible subtractive treatment. Um, of course, uh, the patient contraindicated here are examples, few examples are Bruxter's excessive wear patients with excessive wear teeth, uh, severe attrition, sorry. So patient with TMJ pain, and then we, what we will do, we'll select the patient, we'll eliminate the centric relation interferences, okay? So we will tell the patient to bite in centric relation solo and bite, and we'll see any premature cancer there has to be removed. Then we'll do an evaluation, uh, we'll do an adjustment, and we'll see all the anatomical forms of the teeth is maintained. Any discrepancy should be corrected. Elimination now of the lateral and protrusive contact. Now we'll tell the patient to move the jaw left and right and front and back. And any uh, uh, any contacts which we see in the articulating paper has to be uh, removed. Okay, so that, that we use a red and blue marking ribbon that is the articulating paper to distinguish centric and eccentric contacts. Okay, so the goals are uh, to eliminate both guys. Right. So here you can see protrusive, mediotrusive, lateral. So protrusive, lateral, and centric. Okay. When we tell the patient to bite, uh, this is lateral, this is protrusive. Right. Okay. So that has to be done, guys. Okay. So there you can see the markings. The very dark markings has to be removed. Okay. So you can see here, guys. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so the last slide, guys. So we are talking about correcting the mesial side of the selective grinding. So we will see that too much contact. There is high point. We will trim that off, guys. Okay. And then now we have a proper contact. Can you see from here to here to here to here? Yeah. So premature contact occurs on opposing cuspal inclines and will cause the mandible to shift in the direction um, wrongly, guys. Okay. Right, so it has to be trimmed off, guys. Okay, okay, sorry, ignore that photo down there. Okay, guys, so coming to the summary so, a logical treatment sequence should be planned before any fixed prosthodontic intervention begins. Um, such planning is normally multidisciplinary, it incorporates oral surgery, operative dentistry, and endodontics, periodontics, orthodontics, and other uh, and occlusal therapies okay uh bibliography remains the same guys rosenstiel and schillenberg for your reference as a reference book thank you so much for patient listening for any further questions i am on level 20 please come and see me